Hello guys, today we'll be showing you how to take care of your newly hatched catfish. We know that this is a very technical part if you are into production in catfish farming. This is a very technical part. So we are in the hatchery today, which is the hatching room, to show you basically how to handle them and take care of them. It is very sensitive how to handle them and take care of them. Number one point we'll be talking about right now is the pond construction, right? how you are supposed to construct your pond for this hatchery like that is the newly hatched they call it hatch links right the newly hatch how to construct the pond effectively and number two is how to feed them you don't feed them like the way you feed the ones outside which is the grow out or the nursery section you don't feed them the same way there are patterns to their feeding so we'll be discussing how your pond is supposed to be constructed right and the advantages of having this kind of Pond will actually tell you all of what you're seeing here is intentional, right? They are not just constructed anyhow. They are all well planned and constructed. So number one, I said how your pond construction should be for the hatchery, and number two is how to feed them. So if you understand um, all of this, it will help you appropriately manage your newly hatched catfish in the hatchery because a lot of persons are having problem with that whereby you hatch and after some days they are all dead they are very very fragile right so there are things you are supposed to do to keep them alive so starting with number one how your pond is going to be constructed i think my manager will talk to you about that then when it's done we will talk about how you're supposed to feed them appropriately Good day everyone, uh, my name is Ken Nisha. About the pond construction, the first advantage of constructing your pond well is the size of the pond. The way some people, the way we construct this uh, pond, the size is intentional. So people construct their pond, in, like, they make it long, longer than it's come and show them the pond size. Already. So you can see that the pond size is square and it's not that long. I think this should be three by three. Yeah. So some people, they do construct their own pond long. For example, it's going to be like two sides of this one, like these two points match together. So that's going to be the length of one point. So the number one advantage of constructing your point this way is that, for well, example now, you want to, your water inside the pond is already bad. So I want to let it out. But due to, due to the fact that it's actually that inside the pond, you, you don't want to take the water down too low, so that not to stress them. You know, you know they, are, they are very fragile at this point. So, the best thing to do is to just run your flow to and make the water be going out at the same time to make the water clear. So, if the pond is this small size, the water inside will be able to clear out quickly than when it's a long pond. So, it's going to take a longer time for you to clear out the pond than when it's this small size. So, then the second point, the second advantage is the way siphoning. If the pond is a long pond, it takes it takes a longer time to siphon the whole pond. Like, and the beds will be in some places, your hand will not be able to reach them, like the middle of the pond. And so, the third point, again, is disease outbreak. So, like now, this small pond, the number of fish that you have, that you can use this pond to hatch, is like limited. It's not going to be the same thing when you have a longer pond. So, a long, if you have a longer pond, you want to maximize the space inside the pond. So, you have to hatch a lot inside the pond. So, Compared to this small one, if there is a disease outbreak inside this pond now and you hatch inside your pond, maybe like you use like four or six pond for this one, it's going to be like four or six. Then for the longer, longer ones, for like four pond, it's going to be like two pond for that one. So if you hatch inside and there's, this, uh, there's a disease outbreak inside one pond, now it's only the fish that are inside that particular pond that will, that maybe if they drop or something, it's only that fish that's going to drop that you're going to lose. But if you, if you are using the long, long ones, then they are going to lose more fish due to disease in the pond than the smaller ones, which are going to contain lesser fish than the long ones. The, the, the long ones will contain more fish. So if there's any disease outbreak inside the long ones, they are going to lose a whole lot of fish. But the small ones will just lose that particular pond alone. So guys, uh, that is it about it, about the disadvantages of having all your all your catching in just one long pond. 
right? It's actually not um, a professional practice. Just to retreat again, when all your heart is just in one very long particular point, when there is a disease outbreak, instead of it affecting just one particular point where the problem is coming from, I mean, if there is just one long point, you have the, you stand the chance of losing everything. Right, stand the chance of losing everything. And if your water is bad, because in the heart we don't usually drop the water once, we run like a float soap for them. If the water is bad and you want to gradually let them out and bring in new one, it will take a longer time to let the bad water out. So it is best to have your heart pond well contained in this way. Just so that all your heart means can be easy to manage effectively. In this way you will have a better result. So number two is how to feed them. Why we are here today is because these are newly hatched. You can see the result we have. I think there are two days, right? Two days. This is two days of hatching. See our result. You can view this very well. Read this very well. You have see see our result. See the result. I mean, these guys, these guys, these guys are massive. I think right now we just have about um, hundred thousand approximately about hundred thousand going on to that extent. So now. I want to discuss how you feed them. How you feed them. When you newly have, and you know that they are they are out already, you know, and you remove the tank cover. I believe you should have you'll be familiar with all of these things because we have done a video on how to hatch. So you can go back and um, listen to that video if you want to get more information about that. But when you are done hatching successfully and you remove the tank cover, for the first three days you're not going to feed them. Why is that? That is because they will be feeding on the yolk sac they came with. That is how it is naturally for them. They will be feeding on the yolk sac they came with for the first three days. So you leave them. Don't give them any natural food. Allow them to come up. Allow them to naturally feed on the yolk sac they came with. Then after the first three days, you start feeding. So at your point of feeding, your first size of feed should be 0 0.1. That is where they start feeding from. The size is very tiny actually. But if you're not able to get 0 0.1 in the market, you can start with 0 0.2. But please don't start with 0 0.3. Some people will say they will pick them, but I personally do not do that. I don't start with 0 0.3. So you can start with 0 0.2 if you're not able to get 0 0.1 in the market. Right? Of any feed. You can use main prime, German wing. I don't think German wing is still coming. Just any feed you want. I mean foreign feed for this guy. The first day, 0 0.1. So if you're starting with 0 0.1, you give them that 0 0.1 for about four days or five days, right? When you see that their size is a little bit bigger and they can pick 0 0.2, you then switch to 0 0.2. So you give them 0 0.2 for about four to five days as well. Four to five days. When there is a significant growth in their size, you can then switch to 0 0.3, right? So when you're on 0 0.3, they can remain on that till they leave this hatchery. So they can remain on that. The next size of feed is actually 0 0.5. But they can remain on 0 0.3 for the next two weeks. Mind you, you have used like one week and some days to feed 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. So for the next two weeks, they can remain on 0 0.3. So when they are done feeding on that 0 0.3 for the next two weeks, you can now move them to your nozzle. By then, they must have attained um, fingerling size. So when they are in fingerling size, you can now continue feeding them with 0.5. That is when you are outside in the nozzle. By then they must have they must have taken them away from this hatchery room. Then you can feed them with 0.5. And also the feeding pattern. You don't just pour feed to them anyhow. You know overfeeding can kill them, right? So you have to be very careful while you are feeding them. While you are feeding them, you have to be very careful. That is, you feed them, you know they are very small. So you feed them little but more often. Do you understand? Don't overfeed them, but feed them more. <laughs> Don't overfeed them, but feed them more. So in the essence, you feed very frequently, like three, three hours, you feed them. In every three, three hours, you feed them, just little by little. So you always um, monitor them and watch what is happening. While you're feeding them, if you notice, they are not taking the feed again. And you're noticing from residue of the feed on top of the water, then you know that it is time for you to stop. So you just watch them, you feed them, you feed them gradually like that in every pond. Feed them. When they are not feeding again, you stop. Then come back after three hours. If they are not feeding, don't force them, don't give them more than what they can take. So we have explained everything on how 
you handle and take care of them from this factory room till they get to the nursery section and that is how you are going to handle them no much thing about that again that is how you are going to handle them from here to the uh okay we didn't talk about siphoning every morning you have to siphon because uh there will be residue of their their waste under the water if you check on the right now you will see some death so maybe we'll do another video on how to siphon so that you will practically see that i'll do that video probably tomorrow on how to siphon right so you siphon every morning every morning you siphon every morning before feeding them please don't siphon after feeding them you're stressing them before feeding them is when you are supposed to siphon then you feed them and that is all. So next is I'll be doing the video on how to siphon. Practically, we'll do that video for you to know exactly how to siphon in your hatchet. Thank you guys and adhere to professional practices to make sure you are doing things appropriately in your farm. Remain in profit guys. Thank you.